Hey YouTube, Explosive Moon Patterns here, back again with the end of the video. And today I talk, want to talk about rate of force development, what it is, and how you can uh, improve upon it. So basically, rate of force development is how much force you can produce in uh, a certain given amount of time. And so basically, the ultimate goal in terms of power sports is to produce as much force as possible in the shortest amount of time as possible. Now, obviously, this is important for basically any sport that involves power. You know, if you're a basketball player, track athlete, football player, boxer, some, you know, tennis player, soccer player, if you want to produce power in whatever sport you're doing that involves power, you need to produce as much force as possible in the shortest amount of time. Now, how, how do you go about training that? Well, first you need to look at the spectrum of uh, maximum strength, all right? Because you have to look at something called the force velocity curve, which basically has the high force movements up here going down to the high velocity movements. And what the high force movements are, you have uh, absolute strength, so your bench, your squat, and your deadlift, your basic strength movements. You have strength speed movements like speed squats and Olympic lifts. And then you have high velocity movements like plyometrics and sprinting. Now, what does all this mean? Well, what you want to do is you want to take the force that you get, right? And you want to take that force from your bench, your squat, your deadlift to build up that maximum strength, to build up the maximum amount of power and force you can develop, right? Then you bring it down to being able to use that force quicker. So then you go into your speed strength exercises, your speed squats, your speed bench, and your Olympic lifts. Learning to utilize that strength in a quicker manner. So you're able to develop that power a lot quicker. Now, while these extra, while strength speed exercises are a great exercises for developing that power, they're not the fastest movements possible. So you won't get the full uh, development of this uh, speed of how much of how quickly you can develop the force. So that's where the high velocity movements come in. You have things like plyometrics and uh, max velocity sprinting. These are the quickest and the fastest movements that you can physically do as a human. What this will do is this will train your body to use the force that you've gathered from the uh, absolute strength movements and the speed strength movements and you're learning to transfer that force even quicker. So what you're doing is you're balancing all these elements you're, and you're starting off with the maximum amount of force and you're bringing it down to the maximum amount of speed. And what's going to happen is you're going to be able to get faster because you're able to use more power in a shorter amount of time, meaning that you're able to put more force into the ground, your rate of force development will be quicker, which is going to help you improve in all aspects of power movement. That's why it is important to emphasize all three aspects of your training continuously through training cycles because if you don't have any maximal strength or you have low amounts of maximal strength, even if you have high amounts of speed, you're not going to improve as much because you just don't have the necessary force to transfer into that speed. Same goes to the opposite end. You might have a lot of maximum strength, but if you don't have the speed required to really get that force firing quickly, then you're not going to be the best athlete you can be. Now, obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. You know, there are basketball players who've never lifted, there are track at sprinters who have never lifted, and there are football players who have never lifted. However, there are exceptions to every rule, and if you're an athlete out there looking to improve, I would strongly, strongly encourage that you follow the force velocity curve and you emphasize maximum strength movements, speed strength movements, and high speed movements. Because chances are, you know, if you really want to improve and reach the best and be the best athlete you could possibly be, you're going to want to emphasize all these different aspects of training because it's going to allow you to achieve your goals quicker whether you're trying to run faster, jump higher, you know, hit harder, have more agility, and you know, just improve all aspects of your power related movements in your sport. You have to look at the force velocity curve and recognize all the different aspects on it and train all those different aspects. Now, obviously I gave a pretty brief summary of what the force velocity curve is and how to train it. I'll go into more specifics uh, later. And, you know, just wanted to give a basic rundown on the force velocity curve and what it means for your training. All right, guys, it's been Explosive Wind Pattern signing off. See you guys later. Peace.